So today we're going to be rebuilding Toulouse using Moneyball. The objective we've set ourselves is to win a competitive trophy. Now this does not mean a French Cup. It could be a French League title or one of the European Conference Leagues, Europa League, or the Champions League, the big time. If you guys do enjoy the rebuilds on this channel, be sure to leave a little like, drop a subscription, but let's get into this very exciting period and see what we can do with Toulouse. So then, season one. Now, we are going to be using the up-to-date database. Everything is up-to-date as possible. Now, I do want to quickly thank all of the support on the last video in the sort of rebuild slash tactic. We're trying to merge them now because I know a lot of you guys do like rebuilds and a lot of you guys also like the tactical side as well. So I always will mention what tactic I'm going to be using and you can use it as well. But we are going to try and approach this Moneyball system. To be honest, my knowledge is very limited on how this actually works. But shout out of not shouting him out because obviously he's massive. But obviously I took a lot of inspiration from Zealand and etc etc to try and replicate this sort of style and try and make silence based around it. So essentially the way that it works is that you sign players based off their stats. That could be their goals. That could be their match rating. It could be anything really. And you pick up some really good players that aren't going to cost you a lot of money. And maybe you wouldn't have signed before. But now you are going to give them a chance and actually get them in the game. So we're going to see how far we can go just by using that sort of sort of style when it comes to transfers we actually have done the first transfer window already believe it or not as we are going to go into it right now and we actually turn and bring in a it's going to be two players so the first player is going to be Mohammed from S Tunis on the free again a lot of these players you are going to be picking up on the free because they might not be the most sought after players but they obviously had good times at the previous clubs or they just look really really good and this is going to be the first player right now and this is a player who was more signed off the basis that he is free uh, more than how well he sort of done last season but it sort of falls into the category of you know essentially just spending as little as you can and he looks a really good player 23 years of age four star ability that is him pretty much maxed out but got some very good sort of leveled out attributes to him and i think it's going to be an absolute blessing to this toulouse midfield and like i said at the age of 23 you've got a player there for 10 years or so so a must sort of pick up right there and then we go and we pick up jean devin or kevin kevin devern from Brest on the free. Obviously, this player I've actually used before. He's a very good centre back slash left back. Can play both of the roles. Even can put a shift in at right back as well. But this guy again on the free is a really good pickup. As you can see, 14 tackling. He's not the quickest, no, but he makes up with that. But obviously, his strength, also his stamina is quite good. And again, on the free at the age of 25, you can't really complain. Should get into the team with no complaints either. And some of these players, we can obviously look at, you know, some of their career stats, see where he's been. For example, this player here has been in the French League all of his life. But if we go back and look at Mohamed, for example, he actually has played in the Tunisian division, um, which is obviously quite interesting to see. Um, so it is all about giving people a different chance. And obviously this one here is more done off the fact he was free than his stats. But as you go through the video, you are going to see the signings that we made based off the actual sort of goals scored or average match rating. But the system we're going to be using is going to be the ultimate 4 2 3 one v 3 I genuinely believe at the moment, this is one of the best, if not the best 4 2 3 one you can be using. And I'm a really big fan of it. So I want to see what we can do with Toulouse in five seasons. Um, or not even five, it might end up being six, could end up being seven. Um, I just want to see exactly how long it takes us to win a competitive trophy. I am going to accept a conference league, a Europa League obviously a Champions League, or obviously the French title. We're going to see how many seasons it takes us. We are going to put a cap on it, nothing past sort of 10 or anything, but we'll see how long it takes us to win one of those using this fantastic tactic. But let's go ahead and get into this first season and see what we can do. So the first season actually went a lot better than what I thought because Toulouse are predicted to finish around about the 14th mark, I believe. And we've actually finished it in second place. Now, no, we are nowhere near beating PSG as it stands, but we've only had one transfer window. This shows a lot about how good this tactic actually is to outplace the likes of Nice, Marseille, Lens, Rennes, Lyon, Monaco, Reims, some really good sides that usually get into those places and we have come out and put up quite a good season the second best at scoring goals of 83 and the third best at conceding conceding only 36 which to be honest is not bad at all so going over to the team stats then we actually aren't going to feature in most of them or any of them actually indeed because we're not quite there yet as a team psg obviously going to dominate six of them so that's not really the main factor we're going to look at right away what we are going to look at is the goals scored and that is actually going to be delanga coming in with 32 who by the way looks quite a decent player to be honest nearly scoring in every game that he played in 
14 finish and 13 acceleration, 13 pace. Not the quickest, but is scoring a fair few goals. So that is definitely an advantage. We then obviously drop down to 13, 12, 8, 7, 6, 4, 2, 2. So realistically, I'm going to be honest. We're not expecting to score loads of goals with this team at the moment. We simply don't have the attack and prowess that we're going to need to actually do that. In terms of the assists, we've got 18, triple tens, five five. So that's actually okay. A lot of people getting involved with the assistant aspect of the game, which is really good to see. Obviously, one of their star players, which they're really known for through this Moneyball system, is going to be Big Branco here. A fantastic midfield player who obviously previously played over in Holland, which is very good to see. I'm um, in not the highest tier either. So it's quite a fascinating way of actually making signings. And I was very interested in doing it. So overall, it was quite a good season. But in terms of the schedule, um, it actually started off quite attractive. We actually went some time before even losing a game. Then the losses started to come in there. We actually drew against PSG there. Um, if we could have won, but obviously a good equaliser there from Hugo. We then bounced back quite well in this period here. Beat Rens in the cup, for example. Um, beat PSG in the league here. Let's go ahead and watch that game then, because that's actually, although it's not a cup final or anything, the fact that we're drawing and beating PSG is a really good sign of what potentially we could achieve in this league. As we are going to go 1-0 up here, it's going to be Desley, or Deslier, is that what I imagine? That's how you say that. If he is going to be French, out on the right, ball in the box. I mean, it's a great ball in, a great bit of play as well. This tactic is absolutely lethal with any team in the game, I must say. As it's going to be Big Van in the midfield there, into Ben, plays it through, into Delinga. Delanga, should I say, sorry. Over to Van, in two. There he is, that is an absolute rocket into the bottom right corner. And like I said... Although we didn't win the league, it's a very good sign when you are beating top of the league teams quite convincingly. Although we were at home, still quite a good... What is going on here? Why is the game glitching out? That's interesting. The game is glitching out, but nevertheless, we've got to sort the good... Why, why is it glitching out like this? We do love the match engine sometimes. What is going on? This game is very questionable on multiple occasions, I must say. As they are going to get a goal here with Mbappe. I mean, it's fantastic link-up play. Absolutely fantastic play. You can't really question it. Um, really good play through the middle, all the way straight up to the forward play, to be honest with you. And that is going to be a, nothing but a consolation goal for PSG as we do go up right the other end in to Chiebi, who takes his time, wins the work there from Skyter into Raphael, who hits it directly at Rico and gets quite an easy goal. But we'll get out of that before it skips any more. But um, that was very strange. But do you know what? Overall, we actually had quite a good season. As I said, second place in the first season. The finances, we're going to have £14 million to spend going into the second transfer window. Now, we are going to do our best to strictly try, specifically, to sign players only using this Moneyball method. If we aren't getting anywhere in a few seasons' time, we might, we might alter it a little bit. But um, we'll see, because we want to keep the cost low to bring in money to the club. So just get a little bit better finances going on. So let's go over into this second transfer window and see who we brought in. A bit of players going out and some players coming in. Traditionally in the French League, when you have a good season, a lot of players don't want to stick around because they've had their moment to shine. They want to go over and try and shine elsewhere. But in this in this case scenario, a lot of the players actually go to different French teams that didn't do as well. So very interesting there, I must say. But we do actually use the Moneyball method to bring in a range of very, very different players. Um, and pretty much we're going to see how it plans out. So the first player is going to be Amadou Diange coming in on the free. And again, you might not see some of these because we have gone too far. So the stats aren't going to be on the screen necessarily on all of the players. But this guy had a very good season. We're going to see exactly where we got him from. That is going to be coming from France for FC Quest. Not going to try and say that because I'm going to butcher it. But actually, you can see the stats there, to be fair. You can see the stats there quite well. Um, so this player obviously is going to be brought off purely from a very impressive match rate and more than anything. And again, he's not your traditional player that you're going to probably sign. 29 years of age, not the youngest, and his attributes aren't necessarily the best. But we are going to bank purely on form. And hopefully, this guy can have a little stint in the team, if not be a fantastic backup center back option we then go over to nolan rose or rose i believe how you say that from so chalet for twenty-two thousand pounds again a player i might not pick up usually but we noticed this guy had some decent some decent stats if we have a little look here so you can see right now obviously over in france um we can see 28 appearances 16 goals six assists 7.28 match rating not half bad at all and if we go back on to the youngster here 19 years of age fantastic finishing for a winger as well still a lot to develop as a player but i do believe this guy can get a good run in the team can play sort of on the wing or as a midfield wide option 
and I really feel he's a great a great purchase considering he's only twenty two thousand pounds. We then got over to Matias Fernandez from Sporting B Team, and to be fair. We should know who this guy is. I'm um, obviously we're pretty familiar with this lad, but we'll go and have a little look anyway. This was purely made off the match rate and also the fact that I do obviously know this player. I know how good he can become and his potential is through the roof. And as you can see, already quite an advanced player for this to lose side. Fantastic attributes, only 19 again. So that's two players so far coming in at the age of under 20. So we really are planning for the future. In case this rebuild does go the long distance, then the last player is going to be brought off form. That is going to be Ahmed Yasser Rayan coming in for 4.5 million. Fairly average on the pace factor. Decent finishing, I'm going to be honest with you. But the reason we brought him in is because he's actually got quite a good return record. So coming from the Egyptian League, we are going to be looking here at 34 appearances, 22 goals, 6 assists, 2 player of the matches. Um, was that player of the months? So I'm not player of the matches. And 7.24 on the average match rating. So he is a really good option to have in this team. He can definitely put the ball in the back of the net. And it's four players to replace. Not as many going out, but we've still got a very big team. So it was sort of helpful. We've narrowed the team a little bit down. But going over to the tactics, this is going to be what the team sort of thinks is the best. Going over the best 11. And as you can see, it is going to be a very familiar looking team. We're going to have Hayug in goal. Deslier, um, Rilau, um, I'm not going to say some of these names because I'm going to butcher them. And I'm not too familiar with the French League, but you can see a lot of familiar faces coming in right now. Um, and the bench is obviously going to feature a lot of these new players that are going to be coming in. So hopefully we get to see some of these players come through, have a good first season in the French League. That's what we're sort of much going on because essentially we're going to be selling the players that drop poor match performances, don't play at all, and replacing them with in-form players. So let's get into the second season and see if we can somehow improve on a second place finish. Well, there's a lot of red on the screen if you look to the right very briefly. As we finish 26th in the Champions League phase, we're not ready for the Champions League yet, sorry, by any means of the imagination. Finished third in the French League, which still is actually quite impressive. The only difference is that Monaco actually decided to turn up this season. We lost the trophy to Champion final against PSG, which is a little bit gutten, but nevertheless still a great run in that scenario. Um, the French Cup as well, we lose in the 10th round against Marseille, a very difficult team. Still the second best at scoring goals in the league, so clearly that is an area we are not struggling in. The third best at conceding, so to be honest again, we're not really struggling too much on either side, we're just not winning enough of the games. Like I'm sure if we look in the league table, for example, We'll go right here. Um, a lot of our loss, you can see here, PSG actually drew four, which is quite a lot for them, but 22 wins, five draws. You can see there are a lot of 1-1s, one um, seven losses there, a couple and you know, PSG we actually lost to twice this season, whereas the season before, we obviously drew and won. So not as good head-to-head -head against PSG this year. In terms of the goals, we're actually going to be 17, 10, 10, 9, 6, 4, 4, 4. So again, not incredible by any means of the imagination. I'm going to really try, if I can, get a goal scorer. I did... I did really think that this lad here, Rayan, would get a lot more of a sort of a lot more of a shot, to be honest. But to be fair to him, six appearances and four goals isn't too bad. He just didn't really get a run out. I was expected out of him. Um, but if there is going to be an option on the market that comes up that is young and can score lots of goals, we are definitely going to pick that lad up. In terms of the assists, it's very familiar again. Um, a lot of people getting involved, just not the quantity we're really looking for. I really feel like we're slowly, slowly going to transform this to lose side into a better team each season and this season here was always going to be a little bit of ropey because obviously a lot of players left that did have a fantastic first season so hopefully we can mold the new lads we're going to bring in from this season we just played with and also the window coming up and have a really good season in terms of the schedule um it's not looking too attractive um, obviously a very impressive win here against Lille a very impressive win there. We might even watch that. In fact, yeah, let's go ahead and watch that game. Hopefully, it's not Skippy. I don't know why it would be Skippy, um, but last time we were skipping all over the place um, as it is going to be a 5-0 win against a very strong French team. Um, a great ball into the box there, into Healy, who touches it down. A little bit of a deflection. Is he going to hit that on? A go on. I thought he's going to hit it on the volley. It's a great finish in the end from Fernandez, obviously the new man who I imagine played quite a fair few games this season. I can't believe it's such a comfortable win against quite a good French team here, actually. There's going to be a mistake here from the back. There is great bit of reason there. He's going to fizz it across the box into the big man up front, and that is going to be 2-0 inside of 15 minutes. So to be fair, we were right at the races from the get-go in this game, as it is going to be Van, the ball into the box, a dodgy clearance there. We're going to probably win it for the press. We are into Fernandez, and that is why 
That is why we brought this man in, the young Bruno Fernandes. This is a guy which if you can get and you're playing as a team like a Toulouse, a sort of, you know, underdog side, do get him in because he can work absolute wonders. And the last goal is going to be a set piece. A poor clearance again goes back in the mixer and it's an easy tap in in what is a very comfortable 5-0 win. In terms of the Champions League, it wasn't it wasn't friendly at all. Um a 2-0 loss in the trophy to Champion. Um, a 4-2 there against FC Utrecht, a team who probably should be we, um, at least getting a point against. Florentina, Champions League of Real Madrid, Salzburg. Um, beat Bilbao, which isn't a bad result, to be honest. A point against Wolfsburg. Um, Barcelona, a point against Ajax isn't too bad at this stage either, to be honest. Just not good enough, anywhere near good enough to actually be competitive in the Champions League officially. But we are going to build towards that. In terms of the finances, we have got a very attractive £39 million. And this is why it is good to play like this, because we're not spending big and we're also letting players go. So we are obviously getting money through competition prizes. You know, the Champions League being in that alone gets you a lot of money qualifying for it as well so genuinely we are putting the club in a better financial sort of situation which is why this budget is going up each and each season so let's get into what is going to be the third transfer window and see who we can bring in with this sort of money do want to quickly say though if you're enjoying today's video please do hit the like button below and also subscribe we're absolutely killing it right now i want to thank all of the names coming down the screen right now these are going to be the new or existing patreon members you can see that in the description below as well it means the absolute world to me and you get some fantastic perks of being a patreon so be sure to check it out but let's get into that transfer window so we have got a nice and simple four in four out process we're going to wave goodbye to Nassim, Mamadi, Nathan and also Yanis and we are going to say hello to four various different signings coming in Thiago Santos is a player which obviously we must be quite familiar with by now at this stage of the game coming in for 3.2 million this lad can pretty much play anywhere down the right hand side on the wing also at right back this was a player brought in more of potential than how he was performing i'm a really big fan of this guy and it's quite easy to get him in at a slightly smaller club and he's fan he's absolutely incredible 22 obviously tacklands there at 15 which is very impressive rapid 17 acceleration 15 pace Yes, he can play on the wing. His finishing isn't ideal. So for me, I would love to have him as a right back. That is really the main aim of bringing him in. And I think he's going to be a fan, just a really good addition to the team. Going over to Monaco now. We managed to attract Axel Datayi, obviously a player again who we should be quite familiar with now. The 27-year-old had quite a good season. 14 tackling, 13 acceleration, 14 pace. But the real standout things here the three in the green 16 jump and reach 18 strength and also 16 heading and for that price tag and on that wage salary an absolute must for this Toulouse team just trying to strengthen up that back line we then got over to Lens, another French team for 1.4 million and pick up Farines obviously the goalkeeper 27 years of age just because our goalkeeper is getting a little bit older and now his form is slowly dropping off and this guy was very easy to attract from that club obviously a simple move again not the best of the best keepers but for this Toulouse team definitely going to be in that team and will be a big improvement on what we had before and we then go over to Rennes. It's going to be a complete French last three we're going to sign. For 10.5 million, we pick up Arnold. And this, again, is a player who is a bit of a risk. He's 23 years of age, and I really like the look of him. In fact, we are going to have a quick look at his career stats. This was not a player that is obviously done based off his form. So it's sort of against the money ball in this aspect. Um, this one sign in here, I believe this is the, the second one of the window that was done more off a potential factor than a performance factor. But he's been in France his entire life. Um, and don't get me wrong, he has had he had a good stint at Lens, to be fair. Um, not a bad stint at all, but I feel like at this club, he's going to get consistent game time. And I think with these base attributes, he can also grow and become a very, very key player. So I'm hoping, considering also he's very young, this is not going to be a signing that I regret in this rebuild. Going over to the tactics, we are going to see him get right into the team. The game actually decides to put Santos at the right wing. I will see how he does midway through the season. If not, I will forcefully put him in the right back role and lock that team in. Fernandez remains obviously in this position here. Same for the left hand side. The two in midfield are always going to be the same, by the way, because they are absolute machines in that midfield. New goalkeeper comes in. Desai comes in at the back as well. Desassi, I'll say Desai then, comes in. And it is a nice looking team right now, to be honest. Tons of potential in there some real good players as well we've got a four star four and a half four at the back as well this team is now what i would like to say competitive should be in my opinion now 
guaranteeing Champions League football finishing in that top four. Obviously, that's not enough. We're going to carry on going until we win the league or win a Europa League or a Champions League. But let's face it, at the moment, the only European competition we're in is going to be the Champions League. So it is going to be a very big ask. But let's go over to this third season and see if we can improve on what we've done before. So... The next transfer window, we have spent £27 million. We still have some money left. We obviously have got about £5 million. No, five million left. So we are now going to go back into the transfers and show you, as you can see, the first player is going to be Hugo coming in from PSG, the player that obviously got the last minute or the 75th minute equaliser in the first season against us. And again, this guy is going to be mainly for backup and to compete for that striker position. This guy's fantastic, man. He can play up front. He can play on the right. And he's on a very, I mean, 25 grand a week as well. He really is an absolute bargain. Um, Again, just very versatile. Got very balanced stats, I would like to say. So plenty of time for him to grow into this team in terms of his history as well we are going to be looking at him and again he's another player which hasn't exactly popped off for the main psg team but whenever he's played for the psg second team he's done fairly okay um always been in the french league apart from a stint actually in denmark which we can see here but i am hoping with under this management he can sort of thrive in however many seasons he has with us we then go over to salzburg and pick up glau this is again is a player made from potential because or a signer made from potential because we know how good this guy actually is absolute baller on the game and in real life four star ability already only 22 years of age he cost a fair bit to get here as you can see and also is on a fair whack when it comes to the wage but that is to be expected from this sensational talent um in terms of his history we will go and have a little look so again it's never really in this game set the set the league alight let's just say that but i know how good this guy can be i've signed him in previous rebuilds i know what he's capable of he is literally just it's just a go-to option to be honest he is semi-expensive for a team of this caliber obviously 15 and a half million but i was so eager to bring sort of like one of them wonder kids in we then go and we bring in tau jamais i believe that's how you say that on the free and this is going to be a very interesting signing now this is one done purely from pretty much it is going to be how we performed and he actually out of 34 games he dropped a 7.79 in the main french league well, not the main french league sorry I believe that's a what, what actually division is this in um is that the second that's definitely not the second I'm unsure, but he dropped a very good match rate, and nevertheless, a 7.79 in 34 appearances. So he has had an incredible season. And this is what would be a traditional money ball signing. Not the oldest player either. Good pace, fantastic tackling as well, considering his potential. Um, he's only capped at two at the moment. Obviously, that can change. And I do think this could be a really good signing going forwards. And then the last signing is going to be Martin Vatique coming in for 16 two million a fantastic option here as you can see very similar to the other center half we signed not the quickest but great fitness he's got great determination great strength good positioning and again 23 years of age so got tons of years under his belt to develop into an absolute baller in terms of his attributes he actually is going to be coming from qatar over there and he had quite a good season um 20 appearances, 7.57 match rating, not too shabby at all. One of the more affordable options in our price budget, which we could afford, who had a good season before. So I thought, you know what? We'll get him in. Obviously, before that, he was playing at Sparta Prague. So never played in the French League before. So possibly a bit of a gamble. But that is the whole point of Moneyball to see if this theory actually works. And going over to the tactics, we are going to see a very familiar looking team, but a couple of changes. So now Santos actually is going to be in that right back position. And a lot of these players on the bench and reserves are now going to be our signings. Majority money ball, some of them brought in purely off their potential. As Fernandez drops into a DLP, and it's going to be Glau comes in in this more advanced position right now. And I am really excited to see how this team does, because I look at this team right now, and... You know, we've got some really good attributes just in general, but we've also got some really impressive talent. And I do feel like this team is capable of... I'm not sure if this season is going to be capable of winning the league, but I do think like we can definitely secure that second place back again with ease because this team is as good as the second sort of tier teams in, in that French league, your Monaco's, your Lyon's, your Marseille's. I'm really confident we can compete with those guys. So let's hope for a dodgy season out of PSG and let's go into this fourth transfer window. So I'm quite mind blown and we're going to do a lot of digging into this because we've not won the league, but we have actually won the Champions League against Arsenal. 
against Arsenal. So we're going to look at that entire journey. Don't you worry, because that is going to be a key part of this video. And we scored 81 league goals, conceded 32. In terms of the league, it actually was a good season as well. Finishing, you know, a decent amount of points behind PSG, but quite comfortably in second place. So really did cement that second place as I was after. In terms of the squad, we are going to go and have a little look right now. And it is going to be Arnau coming in again with 28, 17, 15, 9, 8, 8, 7, 6. So it's a little bit better. Obviously, we've got three players scoring 15 and above. One with nine, two with eight. It's not too bad. Obviously, you're never going to get those incredible stats until we start bringing in absolute ridiculous talent. But realistically, that's not a bad season for a Toulouse side, which are not predicted to score loads of goals anyway. And in terms of the assists, it's going to be a very familiar pattern. 16, 14, 11. He had a great season, by the way. That is going to be that is going to be Zachariah and Glau as well. 15 goals and 14 assists. 777 treble 7 5544 five, four. so again quite good contributions from all the players here but i'm going to be honest i am just incredibly keen to see this champions league journey in terms of the finances i thought we would have a lot if we were going to carry on we would actually be given 57.8 million pounds let me know in the comments right now do you want me to start linking these game save files so you guys can carry on them because some people like to do that so let me know but this schedule then, let's go all the way up. So it is going to be a not a great start to the season in the league. Bounce back against Bordeaux and Nantes. A points against Lille. Um, good start to the Champions League. Then we lost to Aston Villa. We beat Bayern Munich. Now, we can't watch all of these games because there will be too many. But we are definitely going to watch some. Um, as that's quite a very good win, to be fair. I'm an 85th minute winner from the new man as well. We then go ahead and beat um, Leon. We lose to Barcelona to Usman Dembele. Goal in the 37th minute. We beat PSG. Um, which is absolutely incredible. It's going to be Oscar again coming in with a winner. Um, we then go ahead and we beat Salzburg and obviously Athens in the Champions League. Really dub Inter Milan. Being Inter Milan in the Champions League as well. Benfica. Lost to PSG in the in obviously in the quarters there. We beat Juventus twice, which is in absolutely incredible. Not the most dominant win. So 1-0 win there from a 46-minute winner. Um, a 2-1 win here, um, which is going to be a double from Zakaria, which is absolutely incredible. And if I'm right in saying, we actually were 3-0 up on aggregate, and Juventus obviously got a consolation in the 89th minute. Um, what a season, by the way. Newcastle in the quarterfinals. And that first leg is going to be 1-1. That is going to be Ansu Fati for Newcastle. Let's look at their team. Who have they got? Eddie Howe in charge. Tactics. They have got Mavogo, Murphy, Anan, Guhai, Botman, Vera, Loftus-Cheek, Gallagher, St. Maximin, Yulinton, Tamari. Um, they have got some Xavi Simmons, Tielemans, Gabriel, Tamori, which they probably, not Tamori, I'm getting, getting that completely confused with Tonali. Um, what a team they have put together. Absolutely incredible team. I always, always fascinated to see how well they do. Um, but we beat them anyway. Um, and then this is what we've got to watch. Manchester City. We drew 1-1 in the first leg. Which we nearly won that, by the way. It was a 95th minute equaliser from Goncal Ramos. Let's see this game here then. Because, again, it's got to be a very familiar pattern right now. We Again, we were leading the game. They equalised in the 74th minute. Um, it was a game which, to be honest, was fairly equal. They played Edison, Max Arans, Diaz, Laporte, um, Hernandez, Rodri, Phillips, De Bruyne, Trincao, Asenjo, Phil Foden. Um, yeah. They've got a fairly decent team. A fairly decent team. Where is Erling Haaland, though? We're going to look at Mr. Erling Haaland, see where he has gone, and we're going to watch that Champions League final um, because I am very interested to see what has happened with that. So, Haaland. Manchester City. Was he injured? Was he not in the squad? Um, I need to have a little look. I just want to see why he was not playing, or was he just not on the... That is very interesting. I have no idea. I have no idea where he's gone. It's contracted. He doesn't appear to be injured. Um, so no idea on that one at all. But nevertheless, with that, we actually do get put through to the Champions League final. Before the Champions League final, we beat Monaco in a 3-1 win. And then we go ahead and play Arsenal. 
And that is going to be a very comfortable, very comfortable 2-0 win against a very strong look at Arsenal team. Obviously, some additions in that team as well, five seasons in. Um, really good additions as well. Let's go ahead and watch this Champions League final as it is going to be Jared Bowen for Arsenal getting injured in the 92nd minute as well. Not a good position to be in. We take the lead, what is going to be inside of just after half time, actually, in the 46th minute. Great bit of play and even better finish as Ramsdale sort of dives over the ball, makes the mind up for our striker, but we're not going to complain. It's an easy goal at the end of the day. We go again here with Oscar out wide into Fernandez over the top. Great little touch and an even better finish. Ramsdale possibly could be doing better there in that scenario. But I am mind blown that we have won the Champions League before we have won the actual French League. Very impressed with that. Don't know why the desk just started shaking. I think I'm getting really excited. But overall, a very, very impressive rebuild, in my opinion. I honestly predicted around seven to eight seasons for this. I was expecting this to be my most like lengthy rebuild. I was expecting to go into the hours. But overall, a fantastic rebuild. And what a suggestion from you guys. Please do keep them coming. Please do, if you want to have a challenge with it. So like, I know, for example, sometimes with Leicester, we wanted to like do it until we won the league with this it was to, until we won a major trophy if you've got a challenge rebuild let, let me know in the comments or if it's just a team let me know in the comments as well and if you do enjoy the rebuilds on this channel please do smash a like button because it helps out an absolute ton and please consider subscribing and turn on notifications because we are seriously dishing out some top fm content right now including rebuilds and including tactics and next fm we're also going to start including some sort of set piece routines some miscellaneous videos for you guys some educational stuff i'll catch you which is going to be on saturday for another tactics video